Hello guys. <laughs> we're out and we're gonna take the 30 caliber versus the new 35 caliber. I've heard good things about the 35. I know good things about this. This is my competition gun. It is the benchmark that all other guns must deal with. It is a 10 shot sub MOA at a 100 meter gun over and over and over and over. So the 35 knows what it's up against. Uh, I'm feeling a lot better than I was before. Uh, thank you to the people that were concerned or just wanted to be critical of me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was um, under a lot of stress and I'm under less stress now and I'm feeling more myself. I am down 30 pounds, uh, skinny as ever. I don't like it, it's not a good 30 pounds, not a um, voluntary 30 pounds, but I'm making lots of chocolate chip cookies and venison steaks, so we'll get that back up. So, without further ado, that recording we are recording now you are here live with me uh, no camera tricks no BS 10 shots with a 30 cal here check this out see uh, live uh, 10 shots with a 30 cal down there and then we'll take out the 35 and see what it does we are not at the range the range is closed uh, due to the world so I got to shoot out here shout out to my good buddy Nick who gave me permission to be on his premises so here we go spot here. It's a bit blurry still. Let's focus. One. Two. Three. Four. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, you saw me wiggling around quite a bit and I can't see as good in this as I could possibly see with my eye. So let's go have a look at the benchmark group. This is the spot where the wind's coming through, right through this track right here. So we're getting a little bit of side to side, left to right today. The up and down should be pretty manageable. But it's blowing hard enough. I mean, this feels like about, this feels like between one and four, one and five miles per hour. And as I've noted before, every mile an hour pushes a 30 cal pellet almost an inch at 100 yards. So one mile an hour, one inch push, two inch push, three, four, five, get the idea. Doesn't take much to shove them around. Okay, let's uh, continue down. All right, here we are, a very, uh, maybe speak a little closer. A hastily shot group right here. This was my aim point, 35 cal. My aim point's gonna be here. This looks like, ooh, nine of them fell in about an inch and then one of them got away from me over there. All right, this is what I'd expect. Ultimately, what I like to see is when I shoot 10 shots to have all of them touching each other. That usually means that it was an element, the wind that pushed it one way or the other. It wasn't me or a flyer. When you have a flyer, you'll have a group and then an oddball out to the side. This is just the elements gently pushing one way or the other. All right, let's load up the 35 and put 10 on paper. Load up the mag for the 35 caliber. Might be able to hear, maybe you can't. But the wind picked up a little bit. So the 35 has a slight disadvantage. Not making excuses, just being fair. <laughs> if it dies down by the time we shoot the 35, then then I'll just say it's a even Steven. And it would not be cool of me if I didn't say thanks to the people who supplied me with stuff. 
Utah Air Guns, thank you for the AccuTech. Actually, thank you, AccuTech, because I think that you probably may reimburse Justin. Um, Element Optics sent me the Helix up here. This is the less expensive, the least expensive currently of the Element lineup. Uh, $3.99 retail. The FX uh, Impact 35, as you know, with the Power Plenum. Um, I'd like to point out, if you didn't see it before, the 30 cal didn't have the power plenum. And uh, the power plenum really comes into play when you want to push velocities really, really fast. It also helps a little bit with efficiency, but it isn't necessarily needed if you're shooting a lower power gun. I don't recommend it, honestly, unless you want to shoot slugs or the 35, because the regular old Mark II Impact, I have that regulated at 95 bar. This one's shooting 900 feet per second, but the reg needs to be at about 145 bar. So you're going to get a lot more shots, not only because you're using less energy, but because it, the 30 caliber is more efficient at using air. The same applies if you go to 25, 22, all the way down. The impacts in England, I think, are getting like 700 shots per fill. It's ridiculous. In that one with the double tank, I get about 120, 140 shots. This one, I think, is going to be about 50 shots, probably. I don't know for sure. If you do know, put it down in the comment section below. This is not a full review. I'll leave that to somebody else. We just want to see if this sucker can hold up to accuracy. I mean, you're buying the gun because of the accuracy. Shot counts, noise, ergonomics, these things only come into play once you know the gun is accurate. So, uh, let me get the camera put on here. Here. <laughs> Where's my camera? Here we go. And something you're going to find out straight away is how well the Helix, the least expensive scope, is actually the best for scope camming. Uh, when the video is done here, you're going to think that the Helix actually looks better than the Nexus, which is a $1,400 Japanese scope. This is a $400, this one's made in China, but for whatever reason, the scope camera loves this reticle. The reticle is a little bit different than the one in that because to keep costs down, we had to simplify it a little bit. So it's a simpler reticle in here. It's a clean version. Well, that's a dirty version with all the hold points. You can get that one in a clean version as well. But right now, this is the only one that's going into the Element Helix. I did that again. <laughs> yeah, let me turn it on for you. There we go. Oh, and watch this. Here's a pro tip here for scope camming. When you get kind of things situated, you can still see recording through this, that it isn't perfectly straight down the pipe. You keep the magnification out a bit. Can you see that? So what I do is tighten her down. I get that without any dark halos on the sides. Now you can see that's right down the pipes. Now when I zoom it, wham, there you go. Awesome, right? And look how good, how clean this reticle looks through this scope. I think in all honesty, I'll be using the Helix for most of my scope camming stuff. I'll be using obviously the Nexus in competition, but this scope just lends itself so good to scope camming. Yeah, that just looks so dang good. I mean, we can go out or in, whatever. It looks sharp, love it. Okay, 10 shots on paper. At 100, 100 yards. yards. All right, that is not as good as the 30, and I know it. Let's go down and have a look at it, and then I'm gonna start tinkering and see if I can get better accuracy out of this gun. My suspicion almost always is right away that the ammunition's traveling too fast. I'll give away some of my secrets here. That 30 caliber, I don't shoot at 900, 950 feet per second. I shoot at 850. And I'm gonna tune this one down to 850 as well, and then we're gonna see if the group changes, improves. Alrighty, what I'm gonna do here is throw on <laughs> this can is just too big i'm going to throw on uh, the fx chronograph i have one of the first chronographs here so i kind of made my own little uh i don't know what you call this 
older. <laughs> Since this has been made, FX came out with a, a 3D printed or probably mass produced now little piece that goes on here. Upper band's holding on, super slick. So it's actually better than what you see right here. So don't expect this, expect better if you buy a chronograph. She's gonna bark now for sure because the can's off the end there. So if you haven't seen how these things work, it's super freaking simple. It's Doppler radar. Turn the bad boy on, seeing a little green light there, and you bring up your FX app. All right, here you go. This, this, this. Say yes to all these things. I agree to the warnings. Register later, leave me alone FX. Okay, connect. Okay, and here we go. Ready? 875. Here's another one. 881. Okay, so she's at about 880. I am going to adjust the power with the simplest form, just with the wheel on the side here. No, uh, no regulator changes. Speed four. Really like 840, 850. 854. One more shot. 851. I like it. Let's shoot at 850, see what happens. I made no adjustments to the regulator and we are on power setting number four. Okay, I'm gonna take this off. So now both guns are shooting at 850, the speed that I prefer for the 30 caliber. Here we go, still up coming through here that's probably there you go <laughs> the wind is still up coming through here quite a bit so what we're gonna do is after we look at that 35 caliber at 850 feet per second now we're going to shoot the 30 caliber again just to compare for the current conditions now here's what we're looking at look at this now we're competing with the 30 caliber this is what I want so FX I think you're a little bit hot bring her down for us huh um, 850. It will also allow you to lower the regulator pressure so that you can get more shots per fill. If you could hear it, and I could, maybe you could, maybe you couldn't. The When I shot at 850, the whole thing sounded a lot better. I had the, the harmony sound, not exact, but closer to that magic harmony sound. So yeah, yeehaw. Um, 10 more shots with a 30 caliber and we'll wrap this puppy up. And would you like a little perspective? 30 caliber versus 35 caliber. This is nearly twice the weight of this. All right, 10, 10 shots with the 30 cal, cal now. One. Okay, I think the 30 just whooped it. <laughs> but let's go have a look just to be sure. The 30 just got a huge break. The wind just killed off. Uh, yeah, so not completely fair to the 35 today. It definitely can keep pace with the 30, the 25, the 22. Yeah, there's. this is what the 30 cal was doing when we first started using it. 
and then slowly we learned exactly uh, what tune it needed to be supreme. It is my opinion that the 35 caliber, it is my opinion that the 35 caliber can now be regarded as a legit caliber air rifle to purchase. And of course it's an impact, so if you like 35, a couple hundred bucks and you change your caliber, no problem. One more bit of fun. Let's go set this up, see what the 35 does. All right, let's take out that Budweiser can. Oh, we got to do this in slow motion. What am I thinking about? Ah, uh, slow motion. There we go. Okay, ready? Got to do this right. And load her up. Ready? <laughs> okay, guys, thank you for watching. And if you've ever followed me on Facebook, I'm really not there very much anymore. Facebook is not very friendly to people who want to shoot guns. I moved over to Instagram, oddly enough, owned by Facebook, but less strict on those kind of things. And Instagram is kind of like, you know, give me the photo, give me the story, and, and move on. So that's where I spend most of my time as I do updates on this and other guns. That's where you're going to find them. Instagram is my place now. Sorry for the Facebook guys. I just got sick and tired of the politics and trying to dance around Facebook's rules. Ugh. My verdict is the 35 caliber absolutely is here to stay and here to compete with the 30 caliber. I have no doubt we're gonna see some guys tuning their guns to get that thing shooting perfectly for competition, if it's allowed that is. We weren't ready for it a few years back when JSB first made the ammunition, but now the technology, the guns have caught up. So yeah. You gotta bear in mind, what you're seeing here is a 30 caliber that I have tuned, just nitpicking every tiny thing. And this is straight from the factory. All I did for tuning it was dial it down a couple notches in power. I'm gonna get this regulator and everything smoothed out. I'm gonna learn all I can about the 35 caliber and I'm gonna tell you what I've learned. Thank you for watching guys and I'll see you at the next one.